we discuss a lot about uh, the recent setup of the Sareb and the implication for the broader market. So, Andres, you want to summarize the most interesting points that were raised during the discussion? Sure, sure, Chiara. Thank you, and, and thank you for having us today. I think the panel was a very interesting discussion in that uh, it focused on the Sareb as a catalyst, but then ultimately then went to the broader question of market activity and will we see more and less market activity out of the banks and in Spain in particular. I think the Sareb, um, it was correctly pointed out that to date it's a very small number of transactions in the context of a very large market. However, uh, one of the points that I think has to be pointed out is that the Sareb is only in its first six months of what is a 15-year expected life, and the Sareb is dealing with the most illiquid and most troubled group of assets in the total of roughly 60 billion. So for them to, from February, when they were finally uh, initiated formally and had their final contribution of assets and capital, to July to be in a position to already go to market with portfolios, and they're now in the market with a number of portfolios, uh, to organize themselves, uh, get a hold of what they own, understand what they own, value it, and then bring it to market in such a short time frame is a tremendous accomplishment. Now, it's the beginning, and they have a long way to go, and they're obviously selling good things before they sell worse things, and they'll have to deal with all types of assets. But I think it's a very important signaling effect to investors and to the international markets that the bad bank uh, has gotten organized this quickly and is already coming out to market. The other thing that was a theme in the panel was the regulatory impact and regulatory changes. One of the important things that relates to the Sareb is the structure, the, the, in, um, the implementation of a Sareb specific structure for the sale of bank assets. It's called the Fondo, Accionario, Fondo de Activos Bancarios. And what that effectively allows you to do is to create a capital structure where you provide downside protection to new investors. And when you're selling assets that have uncertain future cash flows, and the only cash flows are related to the sale of the underlying assets, particularly real estate that was previously owned by banks, that downside protection is extremely valuable to international investors. And therefore, I think that has allowed the SARA to even go out and, and complete deals like the recent HIG deal. Uh, and that, albeit small in the context of the broader market and the problems, it's a imp very important signaling effect and will create more momentum in the most illiquid markets and then over to the liquid markets in the other areas. And then the final point, and then Kiara, tell me if you want to emphasize anything else. The final point that I saw in the, uh, in, uh, the final two points I saw on the panel, which are very important, is that there was a specific mention of one court decision that negatively impacted creditors. Uh, I think regulatory consistency and judicial interpretation of those, reg of those laws and those regulations is absolutely critical. What, uh, what investors hate uh, more than anything is the moving of the playing field or any kind of uncertainty, and they will have to price that in. Uh, ultimately, there needs to be um, uh, a consistency in the regulatory approach, and then in, in an implementation of those regulations on any specific situation has to be consistent with the intention and the spirit of the original regulation. That has not always been the case. There's been two or three examples, and that spooks vet investors, and that could do two things effectively have capital remove itself from the market or effectively price Spanish risk or specific risk that may be susceptible to this misinterpretation on a much more drastic basis. And then the final point um, that we talked about is pers prospectively do we see more or less activity coming out of the banks and I think for many reasons for uh, capital uh, Basel III looming on the future already three to four years of significant provisions being taken and MPLs that are still growing because to date really the, MP, the, the banking market has only dealt with direct real estate asset related loans and unsecured loans that have gone unpaid, the two most obvious impaired assets. But there are still residential mortgages that need to be dealt with which have a reported MPL ratio which are very low and there's still corporate situations uh, which have to be dealt with. So banks are going to have to continue to be active in selling assets both in the illiquid liquid and liquid markets, uh, and that's going to be just more catalyst for activity. And again, this could ha be very, very positive in terms of its momentum, but I certainly don't believe it will go in a straight line. We will have our ups and downs. The real economy fundamentally also is quite challenged. That was another theme that came out, which is a fundamental foundation for all other activity, and that is still something that's going to have to improve in order for the overall situation to stabilize. So you highlighted some of the issues and uncertainties for an international investor in the Spanish market. On the upside, what is particularly attractive uh, as an investor that has been recently involved in a number of transactions? I mean, the upside, it's interesting. Um, for us, as a distressed uh, investor, 
but also a corporate investor, um, we look at downside protection and what can go wrong and how bad does it have to be for us to go wrong. Now on the flip side, uh, we recently acquired uh, a bank uh, called Evo Banco out of uh, Nova Caixa Galicia, which is one of the intervened uh, institutions, banking institutions. And for us, that provides us a platform where we see a short-term opportunity uh, to capture clients, to capture assets and businesses. As the financial system continues to restructure, there will be opportunities. Yeah. It will continue to restructure, there will be opportunities, and giving us a banking platform allows us to capture those opportunities and also enter into asset classes that perhaps are lower risk, but also lower return, or I should say lower return, but carry with yeah. them a lower level of risk, and still within an efficient banking capital structure provide decent returns. I think over the medium to long term, what we're also counting on is that there's going to be a shift, as you've seen in other markets in Asia and the US, as the economic cycle increases, as, pa as time passes, banks ultimately focus on repairing their balance sheets. Once they have completed that, they will go through a strategic shift and say, okay, I have to now focus on earnings and growing my earnings. And that's when what we hope to do with this banking platform, which is create something of scale, something that has its own independent franchise, that will become strategically valuable to Spanish banks, international banks, et cetera, as the, as the uh, strategic shift shifts from balance sheet repair to earnings and franchise improvement.